everyone. Good morning and welcome to Northern Idaho. Hope you guys are all doing well today. We are going to talk about filling our freezers and getting our winter cash um, already this time of year. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Tammy Treyer and myself and my family live 100% off grid in Northern Idaho and absolutely love our self-sufficient, self-reliant, subsistent lifestyle and we enjoy sharing it with others. If you're not familiar with us, you can find us at treyerwilderness.com and treyerwildernessacademy.com and you can find me weekly um, on Facebook Live at 10.30 Pacific Standard Time on Wednesdays normally. Today, it is Friday and it's probably closer to 11 o'clock um, the reason for the change is because this is our hunting season here in northern Idaho and Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday was our elk season. So things get a little crazy. It is our cow elk season. Um, elk opened on the 10th of October, but um, cow season is open for just three days. So the crunch was on for us to get our elk and to fill our tags and fill our freezer. We still have bull elk season. I believe it's open till the 24th of October, so we will have time to still get our bulls. Um, I had the opportunity to shoot at some cows, but they were running like crazy and it was a very difficult shot. However, the mountain boy was able to fill his tag and he got a uh, spike elk so that was a blessing so the mountain boy has us all skunked right now um, he got a seven point by Eastern standards um, buck white tail deer or a three by four by Western standards a um, couple days back and then he got his spike elk which was just an awesome, awesome thing. That was his first elk for the year. And um, first elk ever, actually. And uh, to be out there with him, I enjoy hunting with him. It's a lot of fun. And it was just neat to see. The elk was running, and he was able to... It was one of those where you had the decision to pull up, shoot, and call it good, or forget it, because it was moving fast, and... So he pulled up, he shot, he got it right under the ear, so no meat was damaged, it went down instantly, and that was the end of that. So, you know, we tried to do our best to uh, be good to the animals as well. We don't want them to suffer, we, we need the meat for our freezer, we live off of uh, whitetail and uh, elk, uh, sometimes mule deer, and we've had moose already. So it's a blessing. So how many of you fill your freezer this time of year and start filling your canning shelves? That is what we're going to talk about today. Um, we talked about hunting last week, um, but getting your uh, pantry full, your freezers full, is really important. You know, if things happen, it's, it's really important to be prepared. And, you know, we have been so thoroughly blessed out here because of the type of lifestyle we live. If we weren't prepared, our circumstances the last three years would have been very much more grim than what they have been. And uh, I can't express enough how important it is to be prepared. And it goes to all levels, you know, from toilet paper and simple things like that that you, you know, that you are necessities, um, but to food, batteries. Um, just everything and that's how our minds work we are prepared and we consider everything on our homestead an important aspect of our preparedness I just want to share something with you and then we'll go in out of the Sun I was hanging the wash and uh, you can see my pulley system this is great that is attached to my house and then it goes out and it is attached way out there to a tree but this is a fantastic dryer. Many of you have your electric dryer. I have a propane dryer, gas dryer, but it is still in the box. It's never been taken out. Um, it will be installed for the next owner of our home, but um, I don't have a use for it. I really love being able to hang my wash. I can send this out there all the way out to the, to the tree and hang my wash, hang multiple loads of wash, 
it smells so good. It's so it's air dried. It's fresh, and it's just this is just so nice and so convenient. I I am very spoiled by this wash line. I also have one now in my house. Uh, I've had one in my house all along. Uh, it was right by my wood stove, but now my um, dryer in the house is actually up in my loft. So I'm going to take you guys in. Good morning, Holly dear. I'm going to take you in. Hopefully, I won't make you too dizzy here. It's a beautiful day out, if you can't tell. It's a little chilly, but it's beautiful. But let's get in here out of the bright sun, and I want to show you some stuff today. I was busy. Um, in addition to hunting, I'm going to spin this around quick. There we go. Look at those beautiful jars. There are 14 jars there of white tailed deer burger. And that is from the Mountain Boys um, buck. We also um, have the heart to eat, which we'll probably enjoy this evening. And um, in addition, in total, we have 23 meals from that one animal and uh, a, a boy that's walking around with a very large smile on his face. Uh, this has been a good year for him to be able to skunk the rest of us and uh, put meat on the table, which is you know, something that um, really uh, we strive for. And I know that that has uh, really uh, given him pleasure to be able to provide the meat and be the first one to do it. And like I said, he also got his elk um, two days ago so what a blessing I'm gonna spin this back around there we go ah sorry about that all right let me spin this over here and we will sit I'm gonna spin here that's so bright spin it around here sorry bear with me while I shuffle with the camera okay and whew, it's kind of high there whoa Sorry guys, there we go. Okay, so how many of you are filling your freezers right now and preparing um, for your winter months and really considering um, your food and your food aspects and your needs? It's really important. Filling the freezer is really important. Um, another bonus though with your meats is that you don't just have to be limited to filling your freezer. You can put meat on your shelves as you can see. and, and um, Canning meats is very easy, uh, very simple. A lot of people are fearful of pressure canning, but it's really not hard. It's an easy process. And canning meat is even easier because you don't put any liquid in it. You just put your meat in the jar. So you either chunk your meat up into cubes or you grind it into burger and put it in the jars. And I use a canning funnel on the top of my jars to try to eliminate as little mess on the jar as I can. Fill them up, give yourself an inch of head space at the very top of the jar so it has room to cook and expand because it's actually going to cook in the jar. So right now I could open that jar and just start eating it and it's fine. It's no different than getting canned chicken or, or salmon or tuna in the grocery store. Now um, once you have your jar full, you just wipe the top off very good with a wet rag and then I use a paper towel and just dry it or another towel um, and then you have your flats and um, you put them in boiling water. I use a magnet tool for canning and pull them out. Dry them off really good. Dry off the top of the um, jar just to be sure there's no moisture on it. Put the flat on top of the jar, put your canning ring on, and tighten it. And then you put it in your pressure canner. Um, our meat, we are at 3,000 feet elevation here, so it takes about an hour and 10 minutes to process. But till you get up to your temperature and to your right pressure, um, it's about 12 um, pounds of pressure here for the 3,000 um, feet in elevation. So um, till it gets up to that, you're looking at about 20 minutes to 20 to 30 minutes till you're at that pressure and then you go for your hour and 10 minutes so um, it takes a little bit of time good morning Angela glad to have you joining um, excuse me one second here there we go um, but it's really easy to do and guys it is so nice we when, when the mountain boy got his elk the other day we were out till 10 30 ish 11 it was about 11 o'clock till we got back here after we had gutted it and got it out of the woods and everything. And then when we got back here, um, it needed to be um, 
the hide needed to be removed and it needed to be hung. So we hang our meats for as long as we can, as long as the temperatures provide. So um, it just it preserves the meat, um, really gives it much better flavor. Some people will say it gets rid of the gaminess. But to come in the house at 11 o'clock and have to throw a meal together, we didn't go to bed till 2, till it was all said and done. Um, but I had soup already prepared the night before and I made enough for two nights. So it's preparing all the time and planning ahead all the time. But if I didn't have that and I had these jars of meat on my shelf, all I need to do is take that off the shelf, pull it out, put it in a pot, add some, I make my homemade um, barbecue sauce, so some organic ketchup, some maple syrup, um, onion powder, garlic, salt, seasoned salt or sea salt, um, and you're good to go. And you've got a meal really fast. So the guys were kind of surprised that since we had freezer room that I wanted to can, but with it, the chaos of the season and the time and all that we're doing, and me not feeling well yesterday, I ended up having to soak because the 2 a.m. morning just totally did my body in. But it was all worth it. <laughs> but to be able to pull those jars off the shelf and just be able to put something together is awesome. Jackie says, so much work, but so worthwhile. Absolutely, absolutely. And Tammy said, oh, Tammy's on. Good morning, Tammy. Thank you for your message. I did get, I just didn't get a chance to respond. That was so sweet of you, and thank you for your prayers. And yes, if you just, since you just jumped on, Mountain Boy got a spike buck as well, or bull, as well as his his buck earlier. So we have two hanging, or did have two hanging. We processed the one last night. Angela says we have that happen on hunting nights too, but I usually don't plan ahead well. It's hard. We're all busy. It's so hard to plan ahead well. I mean, I planned ahead and I made two loaves of bread this week, in the beginning of the week, and, and they were gone. So I had to really quickly throw together two more loaves of bread. So sometimes, no matter how hard you plan, it's still, you know, it, you, you can only do what you can do and you can do the, and you do the best that you can and that's where it's at but when you can think out of the box think ahead and try to prepare and 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 when you learn how to do these skills that are going to make things easier for you hello Anita it really really helps so right now the mountain boy has us all skunked and he is very proud and I am very proud of him like I said that was an incredible shot to be able to, you know, not have any, um, uh, gosh, I'm a tripod or anything, and to freehandedly shoot that out the way he did, I was just so, I was so stoked. I just rattled his cage after it was all done, and I was just so shaking him and just so excited. So it's fun. It's fun also to have those memories and to be out there and to, you know, I've taken him hunting from as early as seven years old seven and nine and was getting him out in the woods so to be there when he shot his first elk was really awesome really really awesome so now I know how my father-in-law felt last year when I got my first elk it's really awesome it's an awesome feeling and to be able to put that much meat in your freezer and to be able to preserve it so Jackie says I have made deer meat taquitos I think I'm saying that right um, freeze them and pull them out and fry for a quick snack or meal too awesome awesome my one dear friend Michelle does that as well she does a lot of um, pre meal planning where she will do the meals and freeze them and pull them out I don't do that as much um, because I have all the staples I need and I just I love cooking so but this is one way that really makes it really easy for me. Um, I do sometimes freeze chili and different soups so that I can pull them out ahead of time. Um, but I, I, haven't, I haven't done that so much. I have to maybe focus on that. But I just, I love cooking. So I love being in my kitchen. But for fast meals, this is the way to do it. And that is awesome. I would love to get your recipe. I'm curious. I would love to try those. Um, so it's really important that we try our best to plan ahead. And like I said, it's, it's hard. Sometimes it's really hard. This week was insanely crazy. I mean, we get up in the morning. Some mornings we went hunting. Um, some we didn't. And then we were cramming throughout the day, rushing to get all of our tasks done that need to get done because nothing else stops. You still need to wash. You still need to bake bread. You still need to do websites. You still need to do social media. You know, there's stuff to be done. And and then we go out for our afternoon hunt. Well, our afternoon hunt, we leave here at 2, 
we wouldn't get back till seven. That's if we didn't get anything, you know, so that's why two o'clock morning. So hunting is a really good thing and a really great way to provide for your family. The fun part is when you're shooting, um, that's after that all the work begins and there's a lot of work to it we butcher our own meats we do not take our meats to the butcher shop so the mountain man butchered the deer last night and I pressure canned it and uh, we'll all be working on the elk this week later on Angela says our youngest is 11 and he is enjoying going along hunting he hasn't completed hunter safety course yet so can't actually hunt yet yeah but you know what getting them out there and letting them experience it that's what I did with my son too teaching him how to be quiet in the woods that in and of itself is a task and um, but getting them to experience it getting them to be there getting them to see what it's like I mean I just I love hunting I love being out there I think I said about it last week when the mountain man and I went out for the first day we got into our spot at like probably 5 five fifteen in the morning and we sat in this huge space but it was all dark you can't see it but what you did see was this massive skyline and nothing but fresh stars and I say fresh stars because there's no light out here to taint those stars I mean it was just it was just amazing and that's what I like about hunting too is getting out there watching the woods come alive I love archery for that reason you know I don't know why it's just different to me than rifle season when you're out there in the early morning and it comes alive um, but watching the changes in the scenery as uh, like when you're when we were out there now you get out there at 3 o'clock in the afternoon into your spot sun shining a certain way things look a certain way and then as the Sun moves and, and, and the light changes everything looks different so what looked was the stump before now sort of looks like an animal so it just is really I don't know I spent um, I think it was Tuesday out there by myself the mountain boy and I split up and went into different places and I've talked to you guys about quiet time and being in the quiet oh my gosh it was just such an amazing night I just I I don't know I felt so comforted so at peace and just um, really spent that time talking to God I'd like to ask you guys too for those of you that are prayer warriors for me um, our dear friend Pat was able to come out here he is the one that I've been asking you to pray for with cancer and and now his heart issues because of the chemo and we did get to visit with him two days he came out he was able to get out and hunt he had to return um, he had struggles with his health while he was out here and is is struggling right now so I'd really like you guys to pray for his healing that God heals his heart and and his his cancer his cancer is incurable but God can work miracles and I believe in in that and uh, so I'd just like if you could pray for him, I would really appreciate it. And if any of you need prayer, don't hesitate to leave a message in the comments. Um, you don't need to leave details. You can just mention that you need prayers. God knows what you need, and I, it would be a privilege and honor to pray for you. Um, if you know others that need prayer, and if you want to reach out to me privately, you can private message me or email me at survive at treyorwilderness.com. And if you don't have a relationship with God but you would like one, um, you're welcome to message me for that too. That would... Huh, that would be amazing but anyway I just wanted to ask that of you guys and um, I just want to encourage you to think about thinking ahead and prepare now for your winter months get your freezer full get your shelves full get your pantry full um, and and if you have to do it progressively you know do that I understand funds we are in a situation that is very grim financially and I am still working on um, the same food cache that I've been for three years because we plan ahead and it's really important that you do that because like I said when I was out hanging wash you know it, it just awes me at how awesome God is and how he provides and how he has taught us to prepare ahead it reminds me of um, Joseph in the Bible where he you know had unfortunate circumstances his family sold him off he he went into Egypt and was in jail and and became the Pharaoh's lead man and God's purpose for him was to prepare for the famine and because they planned ahead you know God carried them through seven years of uh, an extreme famine and I kind of feel like God is doing that for us you know had he taught us to prepare and had we not we wouldn't be eating right now and there's a lot of food banks and things available to people that are struggling 
but because of our diet, I can't eat anything with GMOs. I can't eat processed foods, so that's not really an option for us, even if we considered it. But um, And Tammy says, continued prayer for Pat. So glad he was able to visit. What a blessing. I know. Oh, it made my heart sing to be able to just give him a big hug a couple times and, and just to have him spend time with us and enjoy a meal and get him out hunting. I was really praying he'd have an opportunity to get an elk. He's never gotten an elk, and I really wanted that for him. But just to have him out here. And, you know, being sick and, and, and having to rest and having to listen to my body, I also understand his great desire to do something. It's important, you know, I mean, sometimes we have to listen to our bodies, but it's also good for our minds and our hearts and our souls to get out and do things, too. So I understand where he's coming from and his desires to do that. Hello, hello, Chad. Glad to have you. But it's, it's really important that we plan ahead. It's important that we trust in God, too. And I want to share two stories with you. Last year, um, we had filled quite a few of our tags. We had a lot of meat. And we were very blessed with meat, which is huge for us. My men are big eaters, and, and I will say, my men eat a lot of meat. But my men also work really, really hard. And um, not saying that you guys don't work hard either, but they are out in the elements. They are pushing the envelope. Um, they're working in the cold. They're working in the heat. They're, they're, and, and they work a lot, a lot of long hours. So you really burn up a lot of calories, and I'm really grateful that we have the meat we do. I don't eat near the meat that these guys do. I don't know where they put it all. I swear they all have hollow legs. But I'm grateful that God provides for us that we are able to put meat on the table and that we are able to eat. And every night we are very thankful for what we have. Last year, because of our abundance, we felt very led to bless some other families that were in need of meat. And um, we ran out a couple weeks ago. Well, last week. We, we ha we're down to four, four meals about two weeks before the season opened. So, you know, people could look to, you know, have said to me that, you know, well, maybe you shouldn't give so much away. But you know what? We're called to give. We are called to take care of others. We are called to serve others in our struggles. And honestly, guys, that's such a great thing because when you do serve others through those struggles, your struggle becomes less because you're not concentrating on your struggle anymore. You're concentrating on something else and somebody else. And that's why I believe we're called to do that. So the point of me telling you that story is we were down to four meals of meat. We would not have had meat for uh, quite a few days before the season opened. And hi, Cindy. And... Um, one of our friends, I just mentioned to him, I'm so excited for hunting season. We're down to four meals. This is going to be great. We're going to fill our tags. I didn't say it for any other reason, but they felt led to gift us with some of their meat from last year. They filled a lot of their tags also, and they came to us with a tote, a Rubbermaid tote full of meat and blessed us. And, you know, I truly believe that when we do what we are called to do and we serve and we have faith and we pull into God and do what we're called to do, God will always provide. Guys, I could tell you story after story over the last three years of how God has blessed us. And that's just one. Cindy says, hello, my long distance friend. Hello, sweet friend. <laughs> now, I'm going to share something else with you today. You know, um, earlier in the year, we, we were very transparent with our circumstances. And we've been... Um, Muddling through this year, we've struggled. It's been hard. It's been very, very hard. We've been working our tails off at time. At, at a point in the year, we were working so hard that we were darn near killing ourselves, trying to um, make things happen and trying to make things move. And you often hear that you know, in God's timing, things will happen, and that is a very big truth. And we need to wait on God's timing. And honestly, that is often the hardest thing for a lot of people is waiting on that timing, waiting for him to provide in his perfect timing. My truck has been for sale. I have a 1998 um, Dodge 2500. It's a 12-valve Cummins diesel. It's a beautiful truck. We were blessed with it last April and uh, bought that from one of our customers uh, who was selling it. And uh, it has been a complete blessing to us. It is a beautiful truck. It's very clean. It was well kept and had very low miles. And we listed it for sale in the beginning of the year and nothing happened. 
And so we figured God wanted us to have that, and we just had to keep moving on. You know, we do things, and we expect things to happen, but we got to um, accept the way they do happen and God's timing. And not be disappointed and understand that there's just purpose in everything. And that's where I, ha that's the place I am at. And it's a really great place to be because it eliminates a lot of worry and a lot of fear. Uh, I used to worry about being able to pay the bills. I used to worry about all kinds of things. And I don't worry about anything anymore. I have such a great peace and a comfort. And there's so much to be said about that. Because there, life is crazy as it is. Like we've been talking about. Trying to make a meal at odd hours to provide for and, 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 and feed our families. And, and making extra bread. I mean, there's a lot to be done in a day. So when you add worry to that. And worry is from the enemy. And worry, in my opinion, is a waste of time. Worry and fear are such a waste of time because you're missing valuable um, time that could be spent just enjoying the moment. And we so much do not do that in society today. We need to learn to enjoy the moment and just trust. And it is hard. Guys, I, we've, we've been very transparent. We've shared our struggles with you guys. And... If you know other people that are going through hard times or people that could benefit from these videos, please share them because um, I really feel that God is using us to be a light to others. I feel that although everything has been upside down in our life, I still feel that what we are doing has purpose and that we are called to share this and, and help others on the same journey, whether it's financial, whether it's marriage, whether it's... Um, any number of things, job, you know, hanging on to what we know and trusting in what we know and being faithful, God will always provide. So the reason I told you about my truck is because I listed it for sale in January. It expires every so often on Craigslist, so I would relist it. On Craigslist, you get a lot of spammers, a lot of people that are interested but can't afford it. Um, so you get lots of commenting. You get lots of, you know, you all of a sudden think you're going to sell it. Well, it hadn't been listed for a little while, and we're like, you know what? I really feel like God's moving me to relist it. So I relisted it. And within a half an hour, I got a response from an actual human being. It wasn't a scammer. It wasn't a spammer. It was a human being who was interested in my truck. So last um, Saturday, I did sell the truck. The fellow was hunting also. So we are finalizing things today. Now, I want to share something else with you. I'm going to be inconvenienced. So is my family. Sometimes that's hard for us as human beings to um, be inconvenienced um, or have things taken away from us. But it's all perspective. It's all how we look at it. I was blessed with that truck. That truck's not mine. That truck was God's. Secondly, that truck provided when we needed it to provide, but now we've been blessed in another way. And I feel that although we are going to be inconvenienced, I won't have a, a vehicle. Um, so I might be walking places. I might be riding my bike places, which is going to get me in really good shape. So I'm excited about that. Um, when the snow flies, I could get a little creative trying to ride a bike, but I have snowshoes. And the mountain boy and I have walked um, the 10-mile round trip to the post office already on snowshoes and carried 45 pounds on my back, and he had 25 because we went out at Christmas time, and there were lots of packages. <laughs> so the thing is, though, I feel that we might be inconvenienced, but at the same time, God is going to bless us with something even better as time goes on. And um, it's how you look at things. Um, right away, the enemy is going to jump in in those situations and make you question your, your decisions, make you, make you feel badly about your decisions. Um, the enemy is going to stir in there all the time and try to bring negativity into your world. But you've got to realize that there's purpose in everything and that God will bless you. This is a blessing for us. So I am excited. It's going to make things a little different, but it is what it is. And it's forward motion for us, which is also very exciting because we've been pushing and pushing and pushing and nothing has been breaking loose. Nothing has been changing. Um, so this is forward motion. This is a good thing and will enable us to um, get ahead some and uh, enable us to breathe a little bit and then we need to continue working on the house to try to sell the house. As I said, our our financial spot is grim. This is going to help us, but it's not it's not getting us out of the woods by any stretch. But 
it is building our faith and it is building our um, strong faith muscles to endure and to hold on and to see what God is trying to teach us and show us. Take all things before the Lord and there will you will find peace. Amen. Amen. It is so, so true. It is so, so true. And, and I truly believe that he will bless us with something bigger and better. And, and you need to pray. You need to talk to God. God is wanting us to reach out and communicate. Like I said, the other night in, in my, in my spot when I was hunting, I did nothing but pray and talk to God and just, and when you get that peace and comfort and you know that all is going to be good, I mean, that's where it's at. That's where it's at. And knowing where where you turn when you are in turmoil and when things are, are are not easy and not well, that you know where to look to to find the help that you need. Cindy says, When God blesses me, I always wonder is Satan is behind it. I always say goodness never happens to me. God is on this is is out. Okay, I want I'm gonna I just thought of something and I want to share this. God would help us all a whole lot more if we call on him. We've taken God out of everything. And I truly believe, um, and I know that God wants to help us and God wants to move in and do things for us, but he can't until we invite him in here. When Adam and Eve sinned, the enemy became controller of the earth. And God is no longer controller of the earth. He will come to our rescue and help us when we call upon him. But how many of us sit in our struggles and our worries and our fears and we sit there alone and don't call on him? We don't pray to him or things are really good and we don't thank him for him. You know, we need to call on him. We need to ask him. We need to be ripping his ears apart every day. And, and that's what I do. I, I talk to God like I am talking to you guys. If you were in my house, sometimes you'd think I'm nuts. But sometimes I do it out loud. You know, he can hear me and I don't care. There's nobody else in my house. The dogs look at me funny, but they're my best companions because they don't judge. <laughs> so it's important. It's important to call on him. It's important to trust in him. And it says all through the Bible that when we trust, he is faithful. He will always provide. And that's why I'm encouraging you guys. When you have opportunities to serve people, don't look at your food stash and go, well, I can't, I can't help them and I can't give them a meal or I can't give them a couple meals because then we won't have. I'm telling you, there have been many times when the offering plate comes around and I give everything we have, that we have nothing, but we have bills due the next day. And sure enough, I am provided with what I need to pay that bill. We are called to serve, whether it's God, whether it, we are supposed to tithe, that is, that is a must. We are called to tithe 10%. When we tithe 10%, God gives back. When we give to others, God gives back. God sees what we are doing. And we're not supposed to do it to look for something in return. We're supposed to do it wholeheartedly knowing that we're doing what we're called to do. And guys, we've done that so much and it's so amazing, so, so amazing to see how it comes full circle when we're not expecting it. So trust, have faith, and keep persevering. Be a warrior. Be a warrior for him. You know, life sucks sometimes. Our life right now is really sucky, but you know what? You see me on these videos every week, and I am constantly smiling. That is a choice. It is a choice to get up and say, my day is going to be absolutely awesome, even though I woke up with swollen eyes and a massive headache. My day is going to be good. And you know what? My day does turn out to be good, and my headache goes away as I start moving, and the swelling goes down. You know, it's all perspective. It's all how we look at things, and it's all where we put our trust and where, we, where our hearts are. Our hearts can be very jaded. Our hearts can be very broken. Our hearts can need a lot of work. And the only person that's going to help us with that and the only thing that can help us with that is God. So those are my thoughts for today. And uh, I have something I want to read to you. Uh, I, my devotional is just so amazing. I love my devotional. Um, the devotional... Sorry, bear with me while you watch the top of my head. My devotional is a free devotional I've been getting from the church um, every month. It is the word for you today. And let me tell you where you can find it because they have online devotionals also. Um, and they have a website. Okay, I got to put on the big eyes because I can't see anything. Jackie just said, 
You are right. We need to talk to God every day. It shows our faith and trust. It honors God when we call on him rather than acting like we can handle it ourselves. Amen, sister. Amen. That is exactly where it's at. And the more you see us do that, the more you guys are going to see the miracles with us. That's why I'm taking you on this journey. Because like I said, in my, during the, my surgery three years ago, there were things I wished I was sharing, but I wasn't being transparent and I wish I had, and now we're being fully transparent. And I want you guys to see as we walk. You know, we struggle too. We're no different than you. But you, you're you going to see the miracles God's going to work on our behalf and, and as a result. And it's amazing stuff. Okay, let me see here. Where is their website listed on here? Maybe it's in the back. Wordforyou.com. And um, so you can get the devotionals online. I think they have an app, but I'm not recalling correctly. But this is what the current issue looks like. Um, really good devotionals. I love reading devotionals because often they apply to our lives. And um, let me see if I, I probably can't do that. Let me go back. I, I have it on, um, I'm going to share a picture later in the comments below. But I have to find the devotional that I wanted to read to you. Here we go. Okay. All right. It is uh, Rejoice in the Lord Always. Again, I say rejoice. Philippians 4.4. 4. This is called Change Your Attitude Toward It. This is so powerful. And, and this applies because our attitude is everything. Our attitude... Um, causes our trust and our faith to be what it is. And guys, I really want you to focus on understanding when the enemy is attacking. Right away yesterday after we sold the truck, we got an email that was counterintuitive to us selling the truck and that made us, that could have made us question why we even bothered selling it. Because it wasn't, according to the email, it wasn't going to help us in any way. That was the enemy, and as soon as I got it, I laughed and I said, the enemy's trying to, to cause us to um, view this sale of this truck negatively, and I, I just thought it was so funny, and if you start paying attention to it, you will find humor in it too, because as soon as something good happens, something negative or something in your head, um, we all have that little voice in our head. Um, I've had people in my life growing up that have told me that I'm worth nothing and that I'm not capable of anything. And as much as I could hate those people, I love those people because those are the people that have pushed me to prove them wrong. But their words hit my head every once in a while. Um, silly stuff that they've said to me while I'm doing things that they told me I can't do and I'm not um, able to do and might as well give up kind of thing. And when those voices and when that reminder is in my head, I just stop and I say no. I pray for them and I just laugh about it and I tell the enemy to go back where he belongs. And I know you guys have those negative thoughts too. You know, no parent is perfect. No life is going to be perfect. There's going to be hiccups. There's going to be really awful struggles for some. And it's all about our attitude and about being able to overcome those things or to be able to find a positive in the, in the mire. And I'm determined to always find the positive in the mire because that's how I choose to live. I choose to wear a smile regardless how sucky life is. But listen to the enemy and pay attention because that anything negative, the enemy is here to kill, steal, and destroy. God will give you good. Even though he may test you sometimes, there is good in it and the outcome will be better than you could have ever imagined. We're always going to have struggles. We're always going to have trials. The enemy is here and every time you pull into God, he's going to work harder to pull you away. So you're going to have a struggle, but I'd rather be struggling forward than struggling backward and perspective. So let's, let's finish this. So change your attitude toward it. Cheryl continually complained that she didn't make enough money, couldn't afford the things she wanted, and therefore wasn't going to amount to anything. Her counselor said, you're wasting your energy complaining instead of using it to, to get ahead. And Cheryl countered, you don't understand. The job is a problem, not me. The counselor said, your low-paying job may be a problem and your boss may demand too much, but when you're continually upset, you're causing yourself more harm than either your boss or your job. Cheryl asked, what can I do? The counselor said, you can't control your boss or the job, but you can control how you feel about them. Change your attitude. 
Cheryl took her advice. When she stopped whining about her life, people noticed. She got a promotion, and with her new job status, she was more marketable. Within several months, she was transferred to a position with higher pay and a more supportive boss. Good things happen for people with a good attitude. Truth, guys. And your attitude is something you can choose regardless of circumstances. Another truth. Regardless how your life sucks, you can make it better. You can make it... You, every day can be a good thing, even though you're going through a sucky time. Oh, awesome. I'm glad to hear that, Cindy. She said, perfect timing to hear this devotional. Good. I'm really glad to hear that. I, I, I always... I pray that God uses me as a light during these, these live videos. So she got her promotion and, and, her, and she was, um, her boss was more supportive. And again, I'm going to say good things happen for people with a good attitude. And your attitude is something you can choose regardless of your circumstances. Write those down. Those need to be written down and they need to be reminders for us because we forget. All right, now, Paul wrote, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Where was Paul when he wrote that? He was in prison. Who was Paul writing to? People outside the prison. Why did he repeat himself and say, Again, I say rejoice? Because we forget and lapse back into negativity so quickly. Don't we, though? True joy is an inside job that's not subject to people or outside situations. Jesus said, These things have I spoken unto you that, may, that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. He's always there for us, guys. He's always there to help us, to guide us, to protect us, to provide for us. And uh, there's so much truth in this. And the more we pull in and the more, you know, like it said, we can't change our circumstances. We can't change other people. We can't, we can't change those things, but we can change us. We can change how we handle things, where we get our, our strength from. Um, and, and, and if we're looking at life positively or negatively, when negative things hit, I constantly put a positive spin on them. It's really easy guys living out here in the middle of nowhere on this homestead and not having people here all the time to lift you up, it's real easy. It could be real easy to get in a really slump spot, really bad low spot. Depression an, 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 is, again, something from the enemy. So, you know, I don't go out to a job daily. I may talk to people online, which is a blessing and a lot of fun, and is my, my out to the uh, real world, if you will. Many of you have jobs. Some of your people that you communicate with on the job are nothing but negative Neds or negative Nellies, and that can be a real downer. You know, so the only thing we can do is take care of ourselves and choose to be the best we can be, the most positive we can be. Choose to look at life without talking about other people and lifting other people up. I, I have to share this. The mountain boy ran out yesterday to do a trash run and to get some eggs. Um, we needed some extra eggs. They eat a lot of eggs, too. And um, he needed to get some dog food. And he went into town, and somebody opened the door for him, and people were, were being really nice and smiling. And he made a comment about it, about how great it was that we live in a place that there's such nice people. And you, as, as well as I know, that not everybody, that doesn't happen all the time. Some people can be really miserable. If you're dealing with the public, you know that people can be really miserable. But I said to him, I said, you know, well, just think about that. How did that make you feel? And he felt really good. I said, isn't that nice? And I said, now think about this. When you don't do the same thing for other people, you are neglecting them from receiving that really good feeling. So instilling that in our kids to have civility and manners and, and be decent to other people is something that will we'll reward them later because as you give in that regard and serve in that regard, it will come back. And just when you need it too. So keep that in mind. Um, kind of going off on bunny trails here a little bit. Uh, Tammy says that's so true. Yes, and, and guys, I just... I'm, I'm really grateful for this time with you guys. I'm glad you guys join me. I'm glad for your feedback. And you know, I have bad days and you guys lift me. So I'm always hopeful that what I'm sharing with you will, will feed you. And, and that's what I feel God is using me to do is to feed other people because we all struggle from things, whether it's personal things or 
you know, our encounters with others. And, and think about something too. I'm jumping back. I said about how, you know, dealing with the public, there's miserable people. Remember that everybody has a story. Um, and everybody's been affected by something in life. And sometimes that miserableness is, is somebody just needing to be loved. When I waitressed years and years ago, I had first started my web design business and I waitressed on weekends to make extra money for my, for my children. And um, the waitresses I work with refused to, to wait on miserable people. I'd always get the miserable people, which was fine with me because it was always a task to kill them with kindness and try to turn them around and let them have a better day. And this one old man was really grumpy and he wasn't really nasty or anything. He just, he was to himself. He didn't say much and he was just kind of grumbly sometimes. And I came to know through being nice to him that he had just lost his wife a couple months back and he was having a very hard time dealing with it. So remember that when you're dealing with miserable people, to kill them with kindness because they have a story too. We don't know what everybody's hiding deep down inside. You know, there are people that and, and in their 70s who were, who were raped at seven. There are people that grew up without a uh, good families and and or people that grew up with negative influence constant that they'll never amount to anything you know we don't know what kind of baggage people are carrying so that's why we're called to serve and by serving you know we we really benefit um in so many ways and and i want you guys to see that and don't be afraid you know when i I look at it this way. When I have my last meal and suddenly we have guests and I've got to pull stuff together, I, I think of the story where God turned the bread and the fish into enough food to feed thousands of people. Because that's what we're called to do. When we can serve and help others, um, it's so important and it's so rewarding and there's just so much good that comes out of it because it's a ripple effect. The more that we serve other people and offer kindness, the more that eventually they will pass it on too and remember you for it. And they may not know your name, but they'll remember you as the person who saved their life or turned them around or kept them from committing suicide or being in a depressed state or whatever. So those are my thoughts for today. <laughs> Does anybody have any good stories they would like to share? Something that was either that how someone helped you or how you may have helped someone else? Jackie says you are very wise. I hope people pay attention. Huh? Thank you. I'm only as wise as God gives me the wisdom. This isn't me. This is God. I pray every time before I get live. I And he gives me the materials throughout my week and and it's kind of funny I don't really have to prepare for these things he just gifts me with the information so I appreciate your comment but it's I'm giving God the glory <laughs> all right if you do have something else to share please do share it if you need prayers please ask please if uh, if you enjoy these materials share it on your page and and maybe we can help other people too I'm gonna say a prayer quick dear Jesus I just thank you for this beautiful weather and and how you bless us in such amazing, amazing ways with the bounty of our meat that we've harvested and just the amazing relationships with other people and how we can learn from others and how we can serve others. And Lord, I just ask that you wrap your loving arms around everyone that watches this video. Help them in whatever circumstances they may have. Heal those that need healing strengthen those that need strengthened and just help them to feel your peace and your comfort and and be there to help them learn how to eliminate worry and and fear and and enjoy life the way we're supposed to it's going to be tough we weren't promised you know a box of chocolates but you're always there for us you always provide and that brings a lot of peace and comfort Lord, I just ask that you be with everyone this week. Keep them safe and healthy and their families the same. And Lord, just love on them. Help them to learn to serve if they aren't. And uh, as, through the Holy Spirit, Lord, just uh, nudge them and, and let them feel your nudging. It's something that I didn't always feel, and I'm grateful to feel it now. So allow them to be open to feel the Holy Spirit working in them and Lord, I just thank you for them. Thank you for them giving up their valuable time. And Lord, just 
love on them. And Lord, I just thank you for what you do here in this, these live videos and what you do in our lives. And I just ask that you do it in theirs too. And Lord, I thank you more than anything as to what you're going to do for all of us. Your miracles are amazing and your hand and presence is just awing. And Lord, I thank you for what you're going to do. And I ask this in your very holy and precious name. Amen. Okay, guys. Chad says that's the Holy Spirit working through you. Yeah. Awesome. I feel very um, odd to be a vessel. He's been using me as a vessel for a long time, and I'm very grateful for that. I'm grateful that he saved my life and had purpose for me. So, guys, have an awesome, awesome rest of your week. Oh, I should say your weekend. And I will see you for certain next Wednesday at 10.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time here on Facebook Live. Tell your friends. It's also on YouTube if they don't aren't part of uh, Facebook. I do uh, move these videos to YouTube. I'm a little behind, but there's plenty of material on our YouTube channel. You can look it up under Treyer Wilderness. And uh, just thankful to have you guys joining me. Love you all, and God bless.